we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. This is actually quite deep. I thought it started with this because uh, most of the speakers put the quotation at the end of their speech. So I was thinking maybe I, I want to be a bit different. So I start with it. But actually, I'm going to be talking about this as well. All right. Um, some inspirations for this speech is basically, apart from my own experience, are uh, these two gentlemen. Uh, my first challenge is for you to try to pronounce their names properly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, first gentleman is Frederick Haren. He is a Swedish guy, and I think he is the, one of the biggest speakers about business creativity in the world. He, by the way, lives here in Singapore. The other guy is Mihai Csikszent Mihai. He is one of the creators of positive psychology uh, in the US. Um, basically, he has a very interesting research that he did about like 20, 15 years back in Chicago University. And I'm mainly going to talk about this research. Now, what they did is that they gathered all the most creative people in the world, uh, scientists, artists, Nobel Prize winners, sportsmen, CEOs, business people, everybody. And they had a deep interview with them ask a lot of questions, and then try to understand them. Now, what they realized that this intangible thing called creativity, creativity is actually a system. So uh, it is being creative is similar to being involved in a car accident. Uh, like a car accident, we can talk about a person that, uh, let's say, a young, immature guy who is drunk, maybe arrogant. These kind of traits mostly causing car accidents, right? But we cannot generalize that all of them are going to cause uh, car accidents. Because it's a system as well. It's the other driver, it's the weather conditions, the road conditions, and a lot of other things. So it's basically a whole system that causes the accident. Same way, creativity is basically a system. Now, they said that this system consists of three main domains. Uh, one, of the, one of the domains is called a domain, which basically means the, let's say, mathematics, or physics, quantum physics, or music, or taekwondo, running, like athletics. So these are the domains within our culture where creativity happens. The second is field. Field consists of the people, the gatekeepers of the domain. These are the people, our fellow scientists, artists, musicians, uh, taekwondo artists who, can, who are doing the same thing inside the domain with us. Now, without them, there's, again, there's no creativity because let's say you come up with a formula in mathematics, but it's useless. Everybody says it's useless. All the science all over the world, it's useless. You have it for you, but nobody is going to call you creative because it's, it's not working. So you need to have the acceptance or approval of these people, the field. And third person is, of course, the, the, the creative person. Now, I'm going to talk about the person for a bit. Uh, continuing the research, yay. Uh, they wanted to know what are the personality traits of those people that they interviewed, those very, very creative people. And what they found out, that they are very diverse. And throughout history, you can see the same thing. There was one era when mostly extroverted people were creative. Then there was an era when mostly introverted people were creative. Uh, Michelangelo didn't really like ladies. Well, Picasso loved, couldn't, couldn't have more of them. So they are very, very diverse. Now, what they understood is that they are actually complex. This is generally, too, this is generally true for all of them. Their personality is very complex. What does it mean? It means that uh, we all have personality traits in us. Uh, extreme, not extreme. We have contradictory extremes, like let's say, uh, we are trained to be very competitive, uh, but sometimes we forget to be cooperative. <coughs> this is 
this might be true for many of us. Now, what extremely creative people can do is to be in the golden middle, and they can move from one extreme end to the other extreme end. They can behave, they can show these kind of uh, traits. Now, eventually, in the research, they could identify 10 of these traits, 10 of these extreme pairs that uh, are important for creative people. I'm going to show these to you, run through them quickly, and uh, my life hacks are actually in connection to these. All right, the first one, oh, we're going fast. First one is high energy and being quiet and restful. Now, this basically means the control of your energy. So you can be enthusiastic or you can control your, your focus, your concentration, but you know when you want to have rest. And there's no external schedule to, to control that, it's you. Second, smart and naive. Uh, generally, most of the very creative people have high IQ, but if somebody has too high IQ, and they, it might cause this to be um, a feeling of superiority, which might hinder uh, the creative process because they might lose curiosity to achieve something new, to invent something new. So because of that, they also need to be naive to some extent. All right, playfulness and discipline. Playfulness, I don't have to explain. Discipline, let's say there's a sculpture. Uh, somebody thinks of a sculpture, thinks of an idea, but that is not gonna come true. It's not gonna be a creation until the sculpture is actually sculpted. And to do that, you need hard work. You need discipline to sit down and actually create what's ever already created in your, in your mind. All right, four, I said four. Imagination and sense of reality. Imagination, quite obvious. Sense of reality, all right. Um, very creative people can have original ideas without having bizarre ideas. So for example, there is the Rorschach test. Uh, when they show you um, an object or a pattern and then you have to, see, have to see what do you see. Uh, it's gonna be something like a butterfly Normal people would say it's like a submarine, but right? it's like, okay, how? It's like a little bit bizarre. So the idea is that creative people will always be able to have a sense of reality, will not fly that far away. Okay, five, extroversion and introversion. It's quite obvious, I think all of you know this. Uh, in order to uh, study the, the, the domain, you need to be introverted, you need to sit down and then focus on that. While, again, if you want to talk to other people in the field, you need to be extroverted. Humble and proud. As Newton said, we are all standing on the shoulders of uh, giants, right? All creative people that they interviewed were very, very humble. In the same time, they exactly knew how much they achieved and that gave, compared to others, and that gave them motivation to move on. Uh, why are we going so fast, oh my God. Uh, masculine and feminine. Um, they gave some creativity tests to kids, and uh, the kids, the boys who were very, who scored very high on the creativity test, were more sensitive to my emotions. While the girls who scored high, they were more dominant than the others. Uh, Rebellious and traditional. Uh, it's quite self-explanatory again. Passionate and objective. All right, this is about the ideas. You have an idea, you are passionate about it, but you are the first filter. So in the same time, you have to be objective about it. Because if it's useless, it's not gonna help. It's not gonna be creative. And the last one, is all of them felt a great deal of enjoyment in whatever they were doing. And uh, in the same time, they could feel the pain and suffer. It means like there's an artist, there's a musician, and he listens to the song, and he, there's something wrong, wrong about it, and he feels it, he knows, and oh, this is something wrong, I had to correct it. All right, so basically my life hacks are in, connected to, uh, in connection to these, uh, because as I mentioned, most of us, 
tend to go into one of these extremes. So sometimes there is a hack that could help us to think a bit differently. Uh, when I was young in, in school, my teachers always criticized me because I cannot draw in between the lines. Now my boss is asking me why can't I think out of the box. Uh, well, I don't want to talk about the education issues that we have over here, but I think it's quite obvious. Uh, there was a creativity test in 68 uh, um, that done by NASA, and they gave it to kids. Get your idea, go to the kindergarten, talk to your kids, go to your neighbor's kids, translate the problem into their language, and be inspired. Second one. Um, get your, there was this um, weapon manufacturers, and they didn't have a new idea. So they said, OK, let's, let's go out. Let's think of something else, a metaphor. Let's go into the desert. Into the desert. What do you see? Um, I see sand. I see a rock. I see a palm tree. I see a side winder. Oh, wait for that. What is a side winder? It's a snake. It's a snake that detects its prey through heat. Boom, there you go. The side winder rocket was born. It's a, it's a missile that is able to detect the heat in the engine of the enemy. Uh, my other hack for you is to Think totally out of the box when it comes to your problem. Think of a metaphor. Go to the desert. What do you see over there? How can you use that to solve your problem? Next one. Also, also for imagination. Car manufacturers a few decades back all went to the same convention, car convention, obviously. But there was really new, no real, uh, new ideas. So one of them started to go for toy conventions, or game conventions, or fashion conventions, and there you go, some innovation already happened. So my another hack for you is go to the newspaper kiosk, choose three magazines which you have never heard before, buy them, read them. Next one. If he wants it, I want it. Yes, all right. Do you know what a jester is? A jester is who was standing next to the king, and uh, he was the one daring to question the truth. He was the one daring to ask that nobody else dared to ask. Sometimes if we are too passionate about our ideas, we need to be more objective. Find three people about your idea, and let them criticize it. Let them tear the idea <coughs> apart. It's going to help. All right, next one. Be rebellious. In the Second World War, uh, during the blackouts, when the bombers were flying above cities, uh, the Gestapo used blue lights for the police cars, for the ambulances, for the fire trucks. Because blue light is not that visible for the bombers above. Many, many, many cities, we still have blue lights for these cars. The ambulance, the police, the fire trucks. Why? Do we have bombers up there? People keep the traditions. People stick to things even though they don't know why. I challenge you to identify two habits that you have in your life that might be hindering your creativity. All right. Now, back to the enjoyment, back to the research. I hope you put this down. Uh, before we play the game, there was one, there was one very important thing uh, for the creatives. It was enjoyment. Every, every, all of them enjoy whatever they were doing. Now, this process of creation uh, is called the optimal experience. This is when you are so immersed in the activity that you kind of lose space and time and nothing else matters. This is when you are the most creative. This is when you are the most productive. Now, in positive psychology, we call this flow, the flow experience. Uh, flow experience uh, requires basically nine criteria. We're quickly going to go through that, and then we're gonna play. All right, we are going too quick again. Uh, one, the, there are clear goals on the way. Two, there's immediate feedback on one's actions. Three, the, all right, there's, there's balance between challenge and skill. So it's not too hard, it's not too easy, it's just there. Number four, uh, action, and uh, action and awareness are merged. 
you basically, four and five means be here, be now, right now, in mind and body. Familiar, huh? <laughs> Six, there's no, no worry about failure. It means basically you are totally in control. Seven, self-consciousness disappears. It's about your ego. It doesn't matter what other people think about you. You are just doing what you are doing. Uh, eight, sense of time becomes distorted. You all know when we call it, we are in the zone, we enjoy what we are doing. You, oh, oh my God, like one hour passed, how? Nine. I said nine. Wow. The activity becomes autotelic. This is very important. Uh, it means that you are doing the activity for the sake of doing it, uh, not doing it for a later goal. We were told not to do this before. I was told, well, we still do all this. Like, we get the smartphones and we take a look at Facebook because we like to do that. We, we just hang on to that. All right, now what we did up here in Scape is that we designed a game based on flow. It aims to facilitate flow experience during this game. Um, it's purposefully designed for one hour process uh, that keeps you engaged for that one hour. You go from puzzle to puzzle. You have to solve mysteries. You have to defuse a bomb, otherwise it blows up. It's right here in Scape on the fifth floor. And uh, I have two gaming watchers hidden in these two boxes each worth $120, and it entitles six people to go up and play for one hour. Six in that, six in that.